Good evening. Welcome back, everyone, to Williams. Um, thank you all for coming for Sharonda's Deacon Ordination Service, which we're really excited about. So I guess we will get the service started with a word of prayer, so if you would please pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you for such an awesome day. Thank you for the beautiful weather that we have received, and thank you so much for the service this morning. And thank you for getting us all here safely back for this deacon ordination service. We thank you so much for Sharonda and just her bright smile that she brings to our church family. And um, we just are so excited that she's willing to serve here at Williams as a deacon. And we know she will do a great job. May we be there to support her and love her and help her in this new journey. We ask your blessings on this time and this service. In your name we pray. Amen. If you will, get your hymnal and turn to 379. Let's do... Uh the first, second, and fifth stanzas of Take My Life and Let It Be. First, second, and fifth. The stanzas we sing. If you will join me in the litany and responsive reading, you can find it in the uh, bulletins in the back. Come, all that are blessed, inherit the kingdom prepared for you. I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was sick, and you took care of me. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, thirsty, a stranger, or sick? The king will answer, just as you did to one of the least of these, you did it to me. Thank you. On this special evening when we come to ordain Sharonda, we hear another word from scripture, the 23rd chapter of Matthew's gospel, verses 1 through 12. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, 
They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. No, nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. If you will take your hymnal again and uh, turn to 247. Spirit of the living God, please stand as we sing again. this time, I want to offer a charge to you, Sharonda, and you're not going to cry, are you? Oh, okay. I know. It wouldn't be you if you didn't, right? And so, well, I'll try not to make you cry, okay? But as I speak to Sharonda, I hope you will all overhear what I have to say to her. I want to start by reading to you what I honestly think it might be my favorite passage of Scripture, again from Matthew's Gospel, this time the 25th chapter, verses 31 through 45. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who were members of my family, you did it to me. Sharonda, those words remind me of you in many ways. You see, on occasions like this, one often hears words written by the Apostle Paul in his first letter to Timothy. That's a fitting passage, I guess. In those words, Paul explains to a new pastor at Ephesus what it takes to, for worthy men and women to serve in leadership roles, such as elder and deacon in the church there at Ephesus. And that particular text begins in chapter 3 at verse 8 with words like this, deacons likewise must be serious. And then it goes on and on to list the traits of a servant leader in the context of first century Ephesus. And that passage is a fine one. If one wants to talk about exhorting deacons in the midst of ordination. But it's also a passage that's been used too often, I think, to keep qualified men, and especially women like Sharonda, from serving as deacons simply on the basis of an over-literal interpretation. So today, Sharonda, I want to charge you not with Paul's word, but with the words of our Lord that we've heard from Matthew 25. You see, the call to be a deacon is a call that is extended both by the church and by God. It's a call we confirm here today with the laying on of hands. 
And as I like to say, anytime we do that, as I said, when I was ordained, we'll try not to lay the hands on too hard. And so it is above all else a call to serve. And while there are some congregations and traditions that place the role of deacon above the average, they say, church member, as Baptists, and especially as Baptists here at Williams, we understand the role of deacon as to be one of a self-emptying service. And as you are ordained for the diaconate Sharonda, you are ordained into the intentional service of this congregation. But I think it goes without saying, and everybody can say amen to this, I think, that your ordination here today does not mean that you have not been a servant before for this church and this community. Sharonda, your commitment to Christ, this church, and this community is evident not only by your roles as a member of the choir, the various committees on which you have served, and the countless ways, the quiet ways, that you serve others in this community and in this church without seeking recognition or reward. And I'm going to tell some of them. This isn't written down. You all know sometimes Sharonda is always, she's quick to let me know when somebody's sick, when someone's in the hospital. She's quick to bring food. When a new pastor has a little bit of a sniffle, she's quick to give him some medicine. <laughs> That's just between us. Y'all don't take that out of church. Sharonda, not only are all of these just remarkable ways that you serve this church, but perhaps most of all, perhaps what will get you the largest jewels in your crown in heaven is the grace with which you tolerate being both Mike Duncan's wife <laughs> and Doyle Green's daughter. <laughs> and that may be the largest. There is no doubt that you bear the fruit of a dedicated follower of Christ. And with that fruit bearing being evidenced not only in your personal life, but in the lives of your family members and in the lives of the rest of us who know you, I charge you to continue in the faith that has been so evident in your life thus far. Continue to bear the fruit for God's kingdom as you serve Christ church here at Williams. And always remember first and foremost that you were called to serve Christ. And in Christ's service, you were always called to serve others. You will be called to do what Christ has charged us to do in that passage. To feed the hungry. To give drink to the thirsty. To welcome the stranger. To clothe the naked. To care for the sick. And to visit the prisoner. With your ordination here tonight, this church confirms what we have already known for years. And I charge you, now Sharonda, with a servant leadership of being called a deacon. At this time, I'm going to ask Michael Duncan, Sharonda's son, and perhaps another jewel in her crown, to come and offer a prayer of ordination. And after Michael has offered that prayer, Sharonda, if you would come and have a seat here, and we'll form a line down the center aisle, and you come and lay hands on Sharonda. Offer her a word of encouragement, perhaps say a prayer, say something to help her laugh and not cry. And then we will, uh, we will conclude our time of laying on hands with a presentation of your certificate and benediction. So, Michael. Thank you. Over the past uh, few years, uh, many years ago, though, really, uh, we had a few people who were involved with Jacksonville State's BCM. And so every year at the awards banquet, there was an uh, award that was given. Uh, the Matthew 25 uh, Award. And so I think tonight's Reading of emphasis on that's quite fitting. So let's pray together. Lord, tonight we are thankful for servants that say yes. who say yes to your call, who say yes to helping brothers and sisters, who say yes to providing welcome to strangers, who say yes, Lord, to what is asked of them. And so tonight we are 
equally thankful for a church family who recognizes when those individuals say yes. We're thankful for a church family who also will say yes to one for whom many would say no. And so, Lord, tonight we are thankful for Sharonda Duncan. We are thankful for the many roles that she has played in our lives here at Williams as friend, as choir member, as teacher in the community, and for Emily and I, the privilege and honor of calling her mom. We are thankful. And so tonight, we are all thankful for this chance to add to her titles, that of deacon here at Williams a place that she loves and that has loved her into this role. And so, Lord, we ask your blessing upon her and upon this church as they serve together. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen.
As I was just sitting back there right now, and I, I wanted to tell you, Sharon, and, and to tell this church that uh, this uh, night in this service, I know everybody that's here tonight that's uh, had a deacon ordination service, those times where, these people, where all these people come down and give you words of encouragement is something you'll carry with you the rest of your life. And it's a, uh, I just want to say what a great service these are. And, and to say that on behalf of the First Baptist Church of Williams and all these people here tonight, I want to present this certificate to you, Sharonda. And uh, thank you and uh, thank our Lord for nights like this and for people like you. <laughs> Sharonda, before you sit, did you want to say anything? <laughs> I didn't think. And I want you to notice, Duncan slunk off before I could say anything to him. So, I mean, I don't know how to take that. Right? But we'll talk later. We'll talk later. No, no. Um, Sharonda and Mike, I think it goes without saying how much we all appreciate Mike Duncan uh, and, and that sort of team that they form uh, in our community and what they do for us here at this church goes not only without saying, but there aren't words to say it. So. Uh, Mike, this is also a night where we thank you as well, not to take steal your thunder, Sharonda, but we also thank you, Mike, for all that you do. And so tonight, as we uh, have heard not only words to Sharonda, I hope there are words that we all hear from our Lord and take them to our heart and see them in the example of Sharonda and all of our deacons, those of you who are here who are deacons, who are actively serving or perhaps are inactive. May those words mean something to you as well. And may they shape who you are. May they shape all of us as we go forth from this place tonight, encouraged by the presence of the Lord among us. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, our friend, our rock, and our redeemer. Lord, tonight we are, as we have said so many times and yet not enough, Thankful for Sharonda Duncan. Thankful for all of those, Lord, who have answered your call to vocational ministry. Thankful for those, Lord, most of all, who have answered the call to serve as deacons. Or those who are not on the payroll. Those who give of themselves, Lord, in ways that go above and beyond the call that you give us all. Lord, we thank you for the humble service that they give. And pray, Lord, that you encourage us all to aspire to such service, to follow in your footsteps and in your teachings. And so tonight, Lord, as we have been encouraged in this service by your presence here with us, may it go out from this place with us into our homes this evening, into our lives each day this week. May you encourage us and empower us by your Holy Spirit, Lord, to be those people, Lord, that you describe in Matthew 25. And may we do it, Lord, with a righteous humility to where when we see you and we see others, we serve. Go with us this evening, we pray, Lord Jesus, in your holy name. Amen. <laughs>